Hi, today I'm going to be running through a game of Heroes of Black Reach using my uh, defensive fire modification, which is just a little something to keep units from maneuvering uh, in open ground in front of your troops. It's also an adaption, maybe, of Squad Leader. I use the Squad Leader tracking tokens for this. It shouldn't infect, impact any other aspect of the game. Okay, uh, you get one defensive fire token for each order that your side has so that your command control and all of that stuff still comes into play your guys are more able to go into defensive fire mode um, these are placed during the orders phase but you cannot place them on infantry in open ground the idea behind this is if you've ever seen these movies of guys hunkering down behind cover and you know standing with their guns pointed you, you can't be infantry in open ground and go into defensive mode um, units that are marked with defensive mode are busy the entire turn from beginning to end looking for opportunities to shoot. So they may not be given an order and they may not move in the supply phase. They're pretty much committed to this whole turn. They may fire at any enemy moving unit it can see during the regular or supply phase. So this is a, a kind of a breaking of the cardinal supply phase rules. These units can be, can be used during the supply phase also. They may fire at units with no terrain cover. This is important. Um, and it has to be terrain that affects the unit that's targeted. So a vehicle in a foxhole, for example, can it does that still counts as open ground. And so that's important. Um, if, if you're firing at a movement with a, a unit with a movement rate of five or more, you subtract two from the die roll because you know certain units like uh, the assault troops and flyers and stuff like that, they they need to be able to move and that that's an, that can help them out and then to give a little bit of a benefit to sort of outweigh this as far as points goes just you can add an extra turn to the scenarios which allows the attacker to be a little bit more careful in their moves this scenario for the orc has the green raiders which is sort of their staple unit for most of the introductory scenarios plus 150 points you get one order and four units of sluggers like this. We're going to add in some shooters to the side here by plugging it in. The shooters adds three units like this. We're also going to add in the boss mob over here. Let's keep moving the train down the line, which gives us another star and adds a leader. So now we're going to customize some of our units. We're going to customize the boss mob with a boss token, which gives him an additional order. So we have one, two orders here. The shooters we're going to give ammo, which gives them three plus one tokens to use for firing actions throughout the game. And then the green raiders, we are going to give tank buster bombs, which gives them three tank buster bombs and provides the orcs with some armor punching ability. The Marines' default unit for a lot of the early scenarios is Tactical Squad Vorlanus, so we're going to start with that. We can't add anything on this side, but we can make additions on this side. This uh, Tactical Squad has two fire teams of Tactical, one Plasma Gunner, and Sergeant Vorlanus. And it includes one star for the troops and one for Vorlanus. So if Vorlanus gets killed, they're, they're going to lose his. So they begin the, with two orders. We are the scenario also includes Brother Orad, the company chaplain. So this is the beginning, plus you get 150 points after that. So we're going to customize this a little bit and juice this up um, somewhat. We're going to add, for the Marines, the Rhino upgrade. They have a long way to go. This, by advancing in the Rhino, they can get two turns worth of movement in the first turn and then come out of the rhino and get an additional turn with the movement so they're three times as far in the first turn if they attack in the rhino so in this scenario i think it's pretty important that they do that we're going to give the squad grenades an area effect weapon because the orcs main um, threat is bunching up for close assaults so an area attack weapon like a grenade has a good job of dispersing those groups of orcs Brother Orad is going to get the upgrade of Flamer Pistol. Another template weapon for when the orcs bunch up, he can disperse them quite easily. And last but not least, we only have two orders here, so we want to do something. We're going to add a Dreadnought over here. 
this particular dreadnought has massive anti-infantry fire ability with its right arm. Um, just, just devastating. And that can also be spread out over an area. So that's just, there are three weapons, the grenades, the flamer, and now that um, the dreadnought fire. In order to get an extra order token, we're going to use machine spirit for 10 points on here, giving an autonomous um, order token. So the dreadnought creates an order token, but can only be used on him. So he's sort of self-sufficient, so to speak. So that's exactly 150 points in addition for each side. Both sides are laid out. They're pretty decent builds for both sides. And let's play the game. Here's an area recon map of the situational battlefield. You can see it is uh, Imperial trench works that have been captured by the orcs. They've been heavily damaged by shell fire. There's also some ruined buildings around. And it's a couple of interesting features. The orcs are going to deploy over here in the green area. And they'll be deployed on map. The Marines will be entering from off map on turn one from this area. They can enter from anywhere on this edge. The objective is back here. If the Marines can get to that and capture it, the game ends immediately. So that's kind of interesting. There is a breach in the trench works up here, a uh, single, single movement square of breach right there. And one of the things about the trench that's interesting is when you're in the trench, you can fire up and down it freely. So if the Marines can get in there, it'll be like shooting fish in a barrel. They can just absolutely destroy anything that's in there. Um, so that's just an interesting thing about trenches. There's a pretty safe approach to that upper trench breach with plenty of cover to jump from. The Marines could approach here, jump from cover to cover, and you know attack that spot. Once you get close, it's a little bit of open ground and there is a ruined building just past the breach. They could also kind of come up through here and from there they can fan out and, and attack either trench breach if they wish to. So there is a larger trench breach down here. This is two, two uh, movement squares wide so it's twice as wide as the other one. You can see from here it also has another vulnerability in that attackers can approach to within grenade range of it and take hard cover in those rocky outcroppings. So that's, to me, this is a bigger vulnerability. Right there are the two defensive outcroppings that can be used to springboard an attack through the trench line. And a, a straight up attack through here generally can be uh, quick and decisive. The orcs can choose to come out and try to garrison those. Uh, and if they do, it makes the Marines' job much, much tougher. So the orcs deploy first. They're going to put their sluggas in these locations, guarding the breaches for the most part. They're going to place their shooters here to provide some supporting fire. And then the commander is going to be in the back safe because if he's lost, the orcs lose two orders. These three shooter units are going to be placed in the defensive fire mode to start the game. Let's take a look down through the orc line and you can see it's it's pretty well garrisoned as best they can. They're they're mainly an offensive army, but in this instance they're going to have to defend. And so let's begin. Marines have initiative. First thing they're going to do is pile everyone in a rhino and they're going for the mechanized assault on the lower breach. York is going to burst into action, giving him a fire on the move ability with no penalty. Rhino has an armor of seven. Tank plus to bomb against a heavy vehicle is a four. No penalty for firing on the move thanks to his burst into action card. And so he needs a 3 to damage. 6. Holy shit! The Rhino uses the green damage tokens. So a 6 will blow it up. Anything other than that, it's just damage. You're gonna die for that. The Marines are forced to bail out of their tank, and every one of them 
suffers a suppression marker, making them very vulnerable to attacks. Damn. What a mess. They're in a tight spot. There's no way around that. Um, they got to get through this turn and survive and get themselves uh, sorted out in order to press forward with their assault. They're going to spend order number two activating the chaplain. When he activates, every unit within line of sight and within three spaces has one suppression marker removed. These guys have their line of sight blocked by the vehicle that's destroyed, but this guy will be back in order. The chaplain still has two moves. Let's rock. We're going to burn a card, plus one movement, and he's going to try to get into the foxhole, but that's going to trigger this slug again to take a shot at him. They're going to burn a ammo, to give him a plus one. He's got a really good defense of six, so they're going to need to roll really high. Three, no, they do not damage him. So Chaplin... It's going to take a garrison in here. Here's the chaplain's move and the first time that defensive fire is used. For the orc order number two, this unit of sluggas is going to launch a counterattack. Orcs just can't resist beating up on people that are weak and damaged. So he's going to go one, two, and assault. Go ahead, make my day. Let's see what goes. Okay, both sides have the assault ability. They'll both roll two dice and each select the highest. Um, the way it works out, they're both at plus four, but the chaplain is minus two to his die rolls. He's going to try to offset that by playing this card here. You can see he's got a plus one to a die roll right there. So, here it goes. Let's see what they roll. Come get some. Ooh. Chaplain's going to use the six here. Of course, he's got two of them. With his plus four, gives him a ten. He used a card, gives him an eleven. He's minus two for the suppression. He comes in with a whopping nine. The orc comes in with a 3, his 4 gives him a 7, the orc is wounded now, and he has to fall back and take a suppression marker. So he is going to fall back in here. He's suppressed, and on top of that, he's wounded. So the chaplain held his own there pretty well, sent the orcs packing. The Marine's third order has to be given to the Dreadnought because he gets a specific order for himself. He was going to come in behind the Rhino, but the Rhino blowing up clogged the passageway through the anti-tank ditches there. So he's going to move down a little bit and enter the battlefield. One, two, three. Orc order number three is going to be an interesting one because they're doing pretty well pressing forward with their counterattack and they need to get someone out there that can take out that dread with one of the anti-tank mines. So this guy is going to activate the slug and go one, two, three. He's also going to burn a card that has a plus one movement and cross the wall for four. The Marines are out of order, so they're going to have to move the rest of their troops in the supply phase. This unit of sluggers is going to go one, two, and take the position that was held by the counter-attacking orcs earlier. And that'll wrap it up for the orders phase. We're going to do the supply phase next. During the Marine supply phase, Sergeant Borlanus will take the field. One, two, three, four. No one had an unobstructed shot to him who was in defensive mode, so he's good to go. The Marines that are suppressed here still have one movement because they lose two, but they still have one left. He's going to go into the foxhole. Again, he's in cover, so no triggering 
of defensive fire, going to have to take a risk. He lost his suppression because of the inspiring leadership of the chaplain. So now he's got to make a good run for it. He's going to go ahead one. This orc is blocked and can't fire. This orc, however, will take a shot. Might as well burn up some ammo. Give him a plus one. Three becomes a five, and he will take a hit. Two, normally you can't move through someone's zone of control, but they're suppressed. Three. There's only one orc who's able to move in the supply phase, and that's the commander who's back here, the boss. He's going to go one, two, three, four. Turn two begins, and then it's going pretty well for the orcs. They've got guys in these hard cover outside of the breach, so they're actually defending the breach in the best possible place. They still have a guy in the breach, and they took a wound, but they took out a rhino, so that's a good trade off. The Marines have some guys kind of close to the breach. One guy moved forward, and they have some other guys supporting gathered around. They will have removed their suppression this turn, so they're back in, in action and ready to fight. These are the units that are going in the defensive mode this time. One Marine in the, in the foxhole and then a couple of Orcs in the trench. Okay, the first Orc order given out is going to be this unit of Sluggas. They're going to move and assault this unit of Marines that's already got a hit on them. This unit's going to be activated to support the assault. These Marines are actually in a pretty dangerous situation. The attack resolution is going to be plus 5 for the orcs, plus 3 for the marines. Both sides have the assault bonus, so we're going to roll two dice, pick the highest. Um, they each get a 6, so the marines lose. They take a hit. They've already got a hit, so they are killed. Orcs had initiative and used their first order to neutralize the threat to the breach. Doing a good job. So the orcs will take that space and they'll be marked as activated. Curiously enough, that counts as moving, and assault counts as moving, and they are in the open. So this unit on Overwatch is going to take the opportunity to take a shot at them. Their firepower is three. Let's see if it's over the way. Yeah, they got a plus one for a firing action. And hope for the best. The orcs have a defense of four. So they're starting off with a four already. Three, so they have a seven. Almost actually did enough damage to kill them, but not quite. So these orcs have now taken a wound. And this unit is activated because they took it up their opportunity to use their defensive fire. And that would be orc order number one. The marine covering fire got revenge. First order for the Marines is going to be to activate the Dreadnought. He's going to move ahead and fire on the move using suppressive fire. So he's going to go one, two, three. His right arm fires on the move at minus two. It has five firepower, so it's going to give him a three. If he uses suppressive fire, it gives him a six. So he's firing into here with six firepower, so that's ten. That is enough for one suppression just missed doing two suppressions, but his other arm is going to fire also. This one fires with slightly less um, power and it cannot fire for suppression, but here we go. One. No. No damage from that one. The Dreadnought's firepower is really going to help the attack. Time for the Orcs to activate their second unit. and. As luck would have it, they have a burst into action card again, which gives them the ability to fire on the move with no penalty. One, two, three, and throw another anti-tank mine at the Dreadnought. The Dreadnought has a defense of eight. The Dreadnought is not infantry, so it doesn't gain any protection from the building that it's in. So he has a defense of 8, the tank buster bomb has an attack against heavy of 4. 
So they need to roll a 4 to cause damage. 4. Now we got to roll on the damage chart to see how badly the Dreadnought is hurt. The, res the result of 3 or 4 on his type of armor indicates that he receives 2 suppression tokens. Orcs pull the right cards at the right time. However, they've used two of their three tank buster bombs. Marine order number two is going to be the chaplain, Brother Orad. He is going to assault the orcs that are in this rocky enclosure. As part of his assault, he can fire on the move, so he's going to use his flamer pistol to fire into there. Flamer pistol has a two, the orc defense with their uh, terrain is a whopping six, so he's gonna need a four to pull this off, but let's see. Six. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. Well, that's interesting because the rules state that in an assault, if your target is killed, you can declare another target. So he's already assaulting. Hmm, something to think about here. Brother Orad has decided that at this point, it's more important to hold this terrain than it is to go crazy. So he has driven the orcs out of the terrain and has captured it. Damn, I'm good. The chaplain captures the other hard cover and is in position to attack. So for orc order number three, it's kind of interesting. They only actually have two units that can move and they have two orders left to go. Because two of their units are locked down with the uh, defensive fire. So this unit of Sluggas is going to activate, move over one, two, three, so that they have a little bit better field of fire when they go into uh, defensive fire in the future. And These guys were actually shooters, not Sluggas. I misspoke on that one. So this is the final Marine Order, number three. And you can see, and this is a perfect example of why I'm trying to play around with a defensive fire rule. This marine unit wishes to rush up and assault this unit of suppressed orcs and capture this other piece of the terrain, which is the key to this breach in the, in the wall. However, over here in the corner, you can see this unit was given a defensive fire mode. So in order for this marine to get there, he has to walk through the firepower of this unit. So this unit is kind of covering. They are offering covering fire in the open ground. If he had some terrain or a vehicle in the way, or even another infantry unit, he wouldn't have to worry about it. But he's basically going to get shot by this guy. But um, there's a risk he has to take. So he's going to try to assault. After he assaults, he's going to throw a grenade and try to hit those guys. If he wins the assault. So let's see what happens. First, he's got to get shot. So we're going to go one and resolve the defensive fire shot. Shooters have a whopping one, which isn't good. Marines have a defense of five. Three. He does not get hurt. In, in retrospect, there was one ammo token left, which would have made the difference, but you have to declare it before you use it, and I kind of forgot about it. So, two, and here we go. Assault. Rolling two dice for each, and let's see what happens. It is a tie. And in the event of a tie, yep a tie so the Marines bounce back. This move points out how dangerous the Marines can be with their weapons and their ability to fire on their move and the ability to suppress and assault. They're really just an excellent infantry unit however they're generally always outnumbered so it's a tough balance. We have one final unit of for the Orcs and that is the boss and he is realizing that his troops are under heavy pressure over here He's going to have to get over and defend this gap in the barricade. Um, so he's going to activate. He's going to move one, two, three. Hmm, four. Might as well stand in the line. And that will be it for this turn. I actually have one unit to move during the supply phase. I almost forgot about that is Sergeant Borlanus. He is desperately needed. One, two, three. Turn three, let's look at the aerial photo. 
So the Marines are making some pretty good progress, particularly the chaplain. He is almost ready to assault the breach. He's in cover in good shape. Two teams left the plasma and the bolter team. The uh, other bolter team was killed. The dreadnought's in good position to put some supporting firepower down and suppressive fire. The orcs have two units that are within throwing range of tank buster bombs of the dreadnought. And they're also in pretty good cover there. Their commander is now up in position. If the Marines can kill him, that's bad. But if not, he's helping out. And they have three units of shooters still hanging back, taking pot shots whenever they can. And they could do some damage. So these two units of shooters are going to go in the defensive mode this turn. And let's begin. The Dreadnought is going to try to take out these two orc sluggers that are menacing him. He has a suppression marker, but luckily drew a card that allows you to remove a suppression marker and it says play at any time. So he no longer is suppressed, his die rolls aren't going to be modified. He still keeps the damage marker because if he gets hit again and takes another damage marker of the same type, such as a 3-4, he will be destroyed. So he's going to try to use his two weapons, one on each side, to at least suppress the units ahead of him. So we're just going to see what he does. Uh, the one arm has suppressive fire, so we're definitely going to use that to suppress him. So he's going with firepower of 10, because it doubles his firepower. The orc has a defense currently of 6, because he's in terrain. So 10 versus 6, we're already up 4 and we're going for suppression only. Um, so that is 16. Against a defense of 6, that gives him two suppression markers. The other arm is going to fire into here. This one does not have suppression, so he has to just fire on the strength. He's got a only power of 2, but he is going uh, up against a defense of 6. So let's see what he does. 6. Um, so that gives him an 8 versus 6, and that unit is wounded. What are we going to do? we got a big problem. Order number 1. They have one tank buster bomb left. They've got to make it count. They may never get a better chance than this. Because they're throwing over here with no modifiers. Tank buster bomb is 4. Dreadnought's defense is 8, so they need a 4 to inflict damage. 5. They hit. Let's see what the damage is. It's a 6. Blown up. The Dreadnought is a smoking ruin. Woo! Well, the uh, tank cluster bombs paid off in the end. The very last one did what he needed it to do. The next orc order is number two, and this scene may seem like a rather feeble move, but this unit is just going to move down one space to help use their zone of control to prevent the chaplain from crossing over and give themselves a little bit better field of fire for the future. This move led the chaplain to try to go around that. All right, the next marine order will be used for these guys to assault, supported by him, so that's going to activate him. Marines have four support gives them 5 plus to their dice roll. And the orcs have um, plus 2. Plus 5 and plus 2. So let's see what the dice roll is. Plus 5 makes this an 11. And plus 2 makes this a 7. The orcs are taking a hit. They're going to fall back. And they're going to fall back to here. I can't take it anymore! And the marines have taken the other defensive area. That's it. They hold the cover in front of the breach. The last work order, because they're not they don't have anyone else to give orders to after this, is going to be the commander who's sitting over here. He's going to take a couple shots out there. He does have two firepower. The Marines are in cover, so they have a defense of a uh, pretty massive six. He rolls a five, so he does manage to wound the um, plasma gunner team. So it's a supply phase. The Marines are going to go first. They're the only one who really has anyone to move in the supply phase. 
We're going to try something a little dangerous with um, good old Chaplin here, Brother Orad. He's going to go back for one, diagonal for two. That's going to trigger this defensive fire from the shooter across there. He has a defense of six. They have a firepower of one. So they need a five in order to damage him. They roll a six, and he takes a wound as well. I'm not crying over this. Three, and he has to stop once he crosses over that terrain. But he is now wounded. Starting turn four, let's go to the aerial map again. I think things are starting to look a little bad. The Marines have plowed forward in, in spite of their setbacks of, of vehicles being destroyed. And they've captured some, some locations. They got some troops in decent cover. But they've taken losses, just little nickel and dime stuff, getting shot here and there that really are going to come back to bite them. The Orc commander is in position to help. They still got all these shooters back here. And they still have two units of sluggas. Even though they're both wounded, they're still, they're still fighting. Orc Order 1 is a pretty obvious one. These shooters are going to fire at him. Interestingly, no one is in defensive mode. At this point, everyone needs their orders to move. So here's the shot. He's going to use the last ammo token and use this card, which gives him plus one for a firing action. So it gives him a total of plus two. So he's going after Chaplain Orad's defense of six, and he has a total of three. He needs to roll three to kill the Chaplain. Six. You suck. He's got a card with a saving throw thing on it, and his saving throw. Is a four plus. Let's see if he can save it. No. See you in hell. Oh, there goes the chaplain. He has been killed. The Marines are down to two orders with the loss of the dreadnought. However, this turn they just happen to get this card. If I get the glare rip, the rid of it, they get an extra order card taken this turn. So they have actually three orders. And strangely enough, they only have three units. So this unit is going to activate. They've already got a wound. They're going to go one, two, and assault this officer in close combat. And they're going to play Vengeful Fury. It gets to add three to the dice roll. So after you calculate all the different ins and outs of everything, it's five versus five. So it's a straight up even die roll. They've got to win this. And they do by one. He's going to try to make an armor save. The orc is. Saves on a five plus. Does not. I can't take it anymore! The orc takes a hit and he's going to fall back to here. It's a bit of a mess look there, but you can see that there's a big fight going on in the. Um, shell hole that breaches the trench. It's kind of an area that was expected to be the scene of some action and it's it's definitely happening. For the orcs activation, the commander is going to go right back at him. He is going to launch an assault because the marines have already used their card. Now it's going to be much more of an advantage to the orc. He is going in at four. The marines have a grand total of two. Forty-two. Very important die roll for the Marines here. Uh, the, the commander just absolutely whooped them because the Marines rolled snake eyes. They're deader than dead. You guys suck. So the orc boss reclaims his position even though he's wounded. Marine Order 2, he's going to open fire over here. This guy's in the open. So, essentially he can't miss because he's got a 3 plus a die roll. And he has to beat a target score of 4. Which he does easily. This unit is blowed to smithereens. Now they're dead. The orcs have now lost an order token for the next turn because of that.
because that breaks that unit. So the orcs have defended the shell hole. The last thing to worry about is over here, beside the exploded dreadnought, is Sergeant Vorlanus. That orc unit is going to activate and take a shot. He has an extremely decent defense of 7. They need to roll a 6. They do not. Take a shot. He has an attack of 2. The orcs have a defense of 6, so he needs to roll a 4. And hope for the best here. Nope. No damage. Uh, so that's going to wrap up the turn, I think. No, it's not. Because the orcs still have another unit. But I think, looking at the situation, if you can take a look at this, the orcs have shooters in the trench. Still two units, although one's wounded in the crater. A shoot on this side. A wounded slug up there. The only thing the marines have is the sergeant and one team out of the squad. There's no way they can batter their way all the way through there and capture this terrain back here. So we're going to call this an orc victory. I can't believe it! I just don't believe it! Okay, so there you have it. I don't really think the defensive fire rules made a gigantic difference in the outcome. The orcs drew the cards they need to when they needed to. They got pretty lucky with some die rolls when they needed to. Um, and I think the defensive fire rule it sort of did exactly what I kind of wanted it to do. So there you have it. Hope you're enjoying Heroes of Black Reach as much as I am. And if you get if you know the company, please tell them to put some more content out. This game really needs more factions, and I'm hoping they keep supporting it in the future. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.